Hey guys, it's Alexa from Burke's Nostalgia. Imagine that it's 1975, 85, 95, or in my case, 2005. It's a beautiful September day. School just started a week ago, and we, my friend, are going to the mall. Welcome back to the Berkshire Mall. It's been over three years since my original video on the Berkshire was released. Go watch it now if you have not yet. I was there on a Friday afternoon in March of 2017 and it was thriving. It almost seemed like the Berkshire was immune to most of the issues that plagues indoor shopping malls these days. However, much has changed and I figured it was time to bring you all back up to date. The Berkshire Mall suffered its first blow in April of 2018 when the Bonton announced its bankruptcy and liquidation. It shuttered the middle anchor of the mall. Just six months later in October 2018, the long-struggling Sears also went bankrupt and liquidated. Sears was the only remaining original anchor from the mall's opening in 1970. And just like that, the Berkshire Mall went from fully occupied in anchors to only one-third in half a year. In May of 2019, the Gap Store, which was also there since the beginning of the mall, closed its location in the Berkshire. Then came the roundhouse kick to the face that was 2020. The mall closed in March after the state-mandated COVID-19 closures and only reopened in late June when Governor Wolf added Berks County to the green phase. The Berkshire Mall, as of September 2020, is still running on the limited hours of 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week. Last week, it was announced that Allied Property Group, the owners of the Berkshire Mall since 2002, sold the mall to a New York-based company called Namdar Realty Group. At first, I was like, okay, maybe this could be a good thing. Maybe they'll swoop in with some innovative, awesome ideas to save this. Then I remembered it's 2020 and did a quick Google search, and friends, it doesn't look good. Guys, I try really hard not to be a Debbie Downer. Uh, Berks County gets more than enough of that in the Reading Eagle comment section. I just, I can't help but feel like we've seen this before. I have always had hope and I will cling on to hope for the Berkshire Mall. I'll be here till the end, whenever that may be. As we walk around, keep an eye out for name brands versus no name brands, as well as vacant spots. I'm going to keep a running tally in the bottom left corner, just so we can statistically have an idea of what we're working with here. Unfortunately, it looked like Orange Julius was gone. I don't know if that's permanent or a COVID thing, but yeah. 
Also, that is where the gap once was. Just an FYI, <laughs> see what I did there? I did count stores that had notes saying that they were opening soon or they had, you know, gone to clean. So they are counted as occupied. I'm feeling a little funny. Uh, I think it's deja vu. It appears that they're using Bonton for some sort of consignment shop on the first floor. The upstairs is a ghost town. This one stings a bit though. It feels like just yesterday, me and my junior high friends were lounging on the couches right inside the furniture section of Bonton here, while the sales associates gave us the side eye. To be fair, we were pretty beat from making at least three laps around the mall, and then watching the goth boys play DDR in the arcade for an hour. As I mentioned in my first video, the food court was actually only built in 1989, almost two decades after the mall originally opened. Between 1982 and 1984, there was an awesome restaurant up here called Gadgets. It featured Looney Tunes animatronics. You can read all about it in an article I wrote on BerksNostalgia.com. It appears that the food court itself is sitting at roughly 50% occupancy. Uh, I counted six open eateries and five vacant spots. Oh, hot topic. MCR was blasting, and honestly, I thought I was transported back to 2005 for a second. Spent a lot of my parents' hard-earned money in here. Everyone talks a lot about the balls and why they're no longer successful in today's retail climate. There are many factors, and the internet is definitely one of them. 
I think what makes indoor shopping malls like the Berkshire special to us Gen Xers and Millennials is because it represents a transition period in our adolescence. For me, the mall was one of my first experiences with independence. We were no longer kids, but not yet old enough to have a license and really be independent. Our parents dropped us off, we met up with friends, and we had a few hours to do what we wanted in a public space. And as silly as that sounds, it was a big deal at the time. Many older teens got jobs at the mall and spent a lot of time working and meeting friends too. I know my mom specifically worked in the Junior Miss Department at Pomeroy's in the late 1970s. She said when it wasn't busy, the employees would come out and socialize, talking about where the party was that weekend. It was a hub for socialization. A part of me is sad that my almost two-year-old probably won't ever bop around the mall with her preteen friends in a decade. It's an experience that both my mother and I got to share all by 30 years apart. She once told me that she and her tween friends also sat on the couches in the then Pomeroy's department store furniture section after lapping the mall. Oh, I couldn't help but laugh. Sometimes it feels like we couldn't be more different than the generations before us, but maybe at our roots we aren't as different as we think. Our experiences are the bridges that connect us, and when these places are gone, our memories and those that share similar ones are all we will have of them. You gotta watch out for these kind of off name, strange stores, man. They're kind of like the death rattle of a mall. And I'm seeing some pop up here.
so there you have it. The Berkshire Mall is running at about 60% capacity at the current moment in 2020. Is the writing on the wall? We shall see. Let's get out of here. what's gonna happen to the Berkshire Mall. Maybe it's fated to become a pile of rubble like most other malls today. Maybe something truly innovative will be done to save it. Regardless, it won't be the same Berkshire Mall you and I hung out at when we were kids. How could it be? How can you recreate a time and a place? The Berkshire Mall is just a reminder. Anything short of a time machine won't bring those moments back. If my research has taught me anything, it's that the only constant is change. Just like my grandmother told me about the glory days of shopping on Penn Street, I imagine one day I'll be telling my grandkids about the mall. For some reason, that seems like the way it should be. The glory days of the Berkshire Mall belong to you, and they belong to me, and all in the generations that experience the magic of them. Thank you so much for watching, Burks Nostalgiacs. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.